Today I set myself a bit of a challenge. For the next seven days I'm going to use nothing but free BSD and I'm going to make a sort of video diary on how it goes. Now my reason for doing this is for one I'm curious about free BSD but for two I want to see if free BSD and BSD generally can be used for my personal daily driver. My criteria for that is I want to be able to do everything I need to do with my computer without too much hassle. So that's stuff like browsing the web, consuming media, making videos, making documents and even a little bit of light gaming. Generally speaking, I use Linux to accomplish my daily computing, so I think using another Unix-like operating system might be quite an interesting change of pace. So with that said, what are my rules for this challenge? Well, every computer that I use for the next seven days must have some sort of BSD on it, probably free BSD. I've gone ahead and installed free BSD on my desktop and laptop, so I can definitely use free BSD on those devices for sure. But that also means I'm going to try to avoid using other people's computers. I will allow myself to use operating systems that aren't BSD on other devices though. So for example I have an Android phone that I don't plan on stopping using and I have some other devices that I won't stop using as well. However I won't use those devices to do something that I can't do on my free BSD devices. So for example if something doesn't work on my free BSD computer I won't try to cheat and use my phone to do it instead. So with all that said let's get into day one of this challenge and see how I get on right now on the Linux lounge. Or I guess now I should call it the BSD lounge. So before we start this video, I have my system specs on screen now. Now it's not like super new, like recently bought computer, but as you can see, it's definitely not old either. But what I would say about this is that you can probably run FreeBSD on whatever you have. It doesn't require super old hardware to run. So day one for me was very much about getting everything set up that I'll use over the week. So that's my operating system and all of the programs I want to use. Now I could have probably have gone with vanilla FreeBSD, but for the time being, getting that installed seems to be a little bit outside of my experience level despite having installed Arch and other similar operating systems. So instead of vanilla FreeBSD I decided to instead install GhostBSD which is based on FreeBSD. I decided to get the community edition that has the XFCE desktop since that's my preference but I have no doubt that the official Mate version is very good too. At that point I got to work writing the image onto a USB, inserting that into my PC and installing GhostBSD. The live CD for GhostBSD booted up just fine on my desktop and it seemed that all of my hardware worked so I then proceeded to install it and it worked incredibly well. In fact it was just as easy to install this as it is to install any Linux distribution. Once I booted back into GhostBSD after installation I was pleased to see that more or less everything was working perfectly. There are only a handful of caveats. The first of which is my Wi-Fi didn't work which isn't a big deal since I always use Ethernet. Another more pressing issue is that my USB Bluetooth didn't work. I gather that there is a way to make it work, but frankly it seems incredibly finicky. And I think the consensus is that Bluetooth just doesn't really work well on BSD at the moment. Another slightly annoying issue is that my one terabyte internal drive is detected, but it seems that EXT4 support on BSD is very finicky. Which is to be expected, I suppose, since I believe that most BSD users use ZFS. Uh, essentially the problem I'm having is that quite often the file manager will tell me that there's nothing on the drive, but there clearly is and I can't really access it. As well as that, it seems that sometimes my system will just lose the drive and the only way I can get it back that I know of is to reboot. However, my fat external drive seems to work perfectly though. So I think if I wanted to switch to BSD for any extended period of time, I would have to format my internal drive as ZFS. As a whole, it seemed that my hardware was working more than well enough for me to use FreeBSD as a daily driver. So now I know that the hardware support is pretty good, but what about the software? support. Well first I got to update my system. I did have to change the package mirror as the default one was terribly slow, but after I changed my package mirror the updates worked perfectly and it was a reasonably fast experience. After the updates were done I went ahead and started downloading all of the software I use on a daily basis, most of it being free and open source, and I was pleased to see that the vast majority of the software that I use is available on BSD. That's programs like Firefox, Audacity, LibreOffice, Caden Live, and Telegram, and all of those were available just to name a few. And for the 
programs that aren't available on BSD, I was able to find some pretty decent alternatives. For example, the Riot client that I use is not available on BSD, but I was able to find one called HNECO, which works just as well. The official Discord client isn't available either, but I was able to find a terminal program called Sixcord, which seems to work very well for the few times I actually do use Discord. I think the only program that I regularly use and that I'm gonna miss that I couldn't replace on BSD is the LMRY client. However, thankfully my video should automatically upload to LMRY anyway, and I believe that there is a web client that I can try. Beyond that, most of the programs that I use were available on FreeBSD, which was a very pleasant surprise. So at that point, I had a totally set up and complete FreeBSD desktop ready to go and ready to use for everything I need to do. So at that point, I set my sights on making this video. And if you're watching it, it means that everything went well. First, I used LibreOffice to write the script, which oddly under FreeBSD wasn't themed, but it still seemed to work fine nonetheless. Next, I used Audacity to record this script, which presented me with a little bit of confusion as audio devices work a bit differently on BSD than on Linux, but I managed to figure that out. I also had to seriously turn everything up as my mic out of the box was incredibly quiet, but once I sorted that out, it was all smooth sailing. I used Simple Screen Recorder to capture the footage just as I would on Linux, and that worked perfectly. Next, I used Caden Live to edit together my video, and that also worked every bit as well as it does in Linux. In fact, it might be placebo, but I'm actually fairly certain that Caden Live runs better under BSD than on Linux, on my laptop that is. On my desktop, I can't really tell the difference though. And finally, to finish off with, I opened up Critter and made the thumbnail for this video. At that point, I could officially say I managed to create an entire video exclusively using BSD. And then after that, to wind down a little bit, I went ahead and did a light bit of web browsing and video watching with Firefox, and everything seemed to work absolutely perfectly. All websites worked as expected, and I was able to sync my data across devices, although I can't see why it wouldn't work, of course. I also threw on a few songs from my local music music library using Lollipop, which is my personal favorite music player, and I use that on Linux too, and that works perfectly on BSD. So I'd say today, so far, I've only had two issues with BSD. One is that I had to go in and tweak some settings in Pulse Audio because I was getting a lot of static in my headphones and my mic was too quiet, and the other is that sometimes BSD can be a little bit finicky with USB devices, but it does get there eventually. So other than that, I've got to say I'm really liking BSD, and to be honest, in the future, I could see myself as a full-time BSD user. So all in all, to conclude today, I can say that getting BSD installed was just as easy as any Linux distribution. Pretty much everything worked out of the box for me, and although I needed to tweak it to make the experience better, I think the average user could probably just install it and use it as is for the most part. As well as that, I found that there's nothing so far that I'd want to do that I can't do on BSD, or at least nothing that's mission critical. Now, maybe that'll change as the week progresses, but so far, I found that all of my mission critical software that I absolutely need is available for free BSD and works perfectly. So all in all I'd say after what I've observed today I'm very impressed with free BSD and I think it'll be in my life for a long time to come after this week. Although whether or not I'll keep using it as my daily driver remains to be seen. So with that said I will see you tomorrow with another update that hopefully isn't as long and drawn out as this one and I'll use that to show you how I'm getting on. But with that said, that's it for today's video, and I will see you in the next one.